Hi right, everyone, welcome back to Chicken Hole Base. So today we're starting over here by the rover, which as you can see is loaded with these IBC totes. These I got used, they were originally filled with molasses, but that's not a problem. Molasses will just rinse out, it's not toxic or anything. We'll be putting these to use fairly soon. They each hold one ton of water. <laughs> If we come over here, you can see where I got the soil and fertilizer stacked up. We'll, we'll move this soon. There are some of these flowers. They're very pretty. Nice bluish purple color. They make these uh, green beans here. These are Rocky Mountain bee plants. Genus Colomi, family Brassica. They are indeed an edible native plant. Now, I haven't seen them before. But there's a bunch of them popping up now. I was thinking maybe they came in like stuck to the rover, like the mud that gets stuck into the wheel well here. Because there are some of these down uh, at the B location. I drove through them, so I was thinking maybe the seeds have been in the mud and they got transported here by the rover. There's one of my bees. But there's also some of them out in the field where I've never had the rover. Yeah, you can see there's several plants over here. So I did some research. Their seeds just can survive in the soil for long periods of time. So there could have been some of these bee plants growing here 10 years ago before I came out here. And then because we had a wet winter, some of the seeds were able to sprout and grow into plants. Oh, there's actually more of them here. I didn't realize. So they're actually all over. Molly here's getting a drink. Hey. <laughs> he likes running water. Yeah. His uh, antenna is almost back to normal. You can see the hair's almost grown back in. Okay, you done? All right, I'm gonna turn this off. And these uh, bee plants are really attractive to the sphinx moths. You can see them. It's actually interesting because the their wings are moving much faster than they appear. The camera is getting like a strobe effect, making them look like they're moving slowly or not at all. It's really cool. <laughs> like just to the naked eye, they just look like a blur. You can't even see their wings. At any rate, since they're so good for pollinators, I decided to leave them alone. Just let them grow. Uh, come over here. You can see Molly has found some shade. Hey boy, you doing good? Yeah. Yeah, glad to have that cone off. Yeah. <laughs> now, this uh, experiment I was running last time with the tube that goes up the mountain if you remember. Uh, many people suggested that it is working, but I was just not able to see the effect. And so I put a plastic bag on the end of it, and this bag does deflate over time. The air is being sucked through, it's just moving very, very slowly. Here it is after an hour or so. It sucked the air out of the bag. Nice. So it does work, it's just the internal friction and such is making so the air is not moving very rapidly. I think if I made a, the hose or the tube bigger, it would pull more air more quickly. Uh, so anyway, uh, one thing I want to do this episode is move some of these tanks around. So. Those two over there that have got liquid in them, we're gonna pump the liquid out, put it into IBC totes. Probably put them next to this one over here for now. And that way we can move these over to the uh, storage location where RoboCody is currently doing some mowing. I had RoboCody save some of the cuttings in order to grow mushrooms. To do that, 
he added some calcium hydroxide to water, added the cuttings to the water to sanitize them, drain the water off, add some mushroom spawn, and then pack that into some plastic bags. The mushroom spawn will colonize the cuttings, and in a few weeks, I'll be able to have some mushrooms. It looks like there's a storm coming. You can see the sheets of rain coming down over there. They're gonna get wet pretty soon. Fun. This is definitely gonna flash flood. I kinda wanna see it. There we go. Got some water running. So muddy. That's a good one. So now that that excitement is over, you can see I'm back to work now pumping the salt water from the tank into the IBC tote. You see, always checking things out. You, know, you can't drink that water. Uh, it might be a good idea for me to write on them, label them what they are. This one over here is fresh water. It'll be good to get that water pumped out of there before those bugs totally rot. That way the water will be a little bit cleaner. They're still big enough not to fit through the filter on the pump. So I'm rinsing the brine out with a little bit of fresh water just to make things a little cleaner. So there's all the salt water pumped out. Even rinsed it with some fresh water to remove as much salt as I could. And now I'm just gonna pull this string and bring the pump out of the tank. Don't even have to go in there. <laughs> Much safer. I may have Robo Cody go in and you know clean out the bugs, but we'll wait until the tank is turned a little bit better first. So the salty brine tank is pumped out, and we're now working on the fresh water. As you can see, we're using two pumps to make it go faster. So, there we go. The tanks have been pumped dry, are much lighter, and therefore easier to move. Hopefully we'll get to move this one by the end of this episode. Got some items here, we're just gonna tow it out with the rover. Just slide it along the ground. For short distance it'll be fine. And you can see over here, a Robo Cody has helped me move some more of these intermediate bulk containers down. We managed to almost fill one all the way with brine, two of them with snow water, with enough left over to top off this tank here. So that was pretty good. So you can see, I've been doing some more work on the HAB here. I installed a solar panel, well, mostly installed it. I was just gonna have it here temporarily so that I could charge the little power wagon while it was stored as the weather's starting to get to it. You can see I've also added Another little addition, which I may rework. But the uh, charge controller, brand new out of the box, didn't work. So, gonna have to pause that project. And in fact, I think I'm gonna shelve this whole Green Hab project for at least a little while. I keep thinking, oh, I'm gonna get it finished in the next episode. But, you know, the complexity keeps increasing. You got these, these rollers, which still not I'm not happy with and the, the doors and the airlocks and all that. It's just, I still want to finish it eventually, but it's just going to take some time. And so I've uh, been diverting my attention to other projects. If you come around here where the rooster is, you can see that we've begun excavating some regolith here because this is where I want to drag one of those tanks. I'm just going to make a super simple greenhouse uh, just basically cut a hole to walk into. I think that'll be pretty nice. 
I did decide though that this rover's parked too close, so I'm gonna have to move it. And that's gonna be a bit of a chore because well, it hasn't run in a while and it looks like a rat's moved in. I'm gonna have to get the CAT over here to help with that. I think if I get it cleaned up and any wires that are chewed fix, fixed, uh, I think it'll run just fine. It ran when it was parked at least. <laughs> so we managed to successfully capture the rat. Here it is in this box. It's scared but otherwise unharmed. And the plan is just to release it far away from base in this cave that we found. I'm going to give it the box with the lid propped open a little bit just so it has a temporary place to stay and all of its bedding and food. Interesting how that there's cow and chicken poop that was brought here by the rat along with some of the berries and various other plant particles. The rat just picked up everything it looks like. There's even a bone. Huh. Alright, it didn't look like anything too important got chewed through. Go ahead and hit it. Alright, like it had been sitting there idling. Very good. Let's get it moved out of here. There we go. The Mark II Green Hab has been moved into position. As you can see, it is sitting where the camper hab was. That has been moved up there where the chickens were, and the chickens have been moved over here to the other side of this tree. Look at that. He's got it figured out. The other ones are they know there's food there, but they haven't quite figured it out. Uh, it's better anyway for them. During the day, they'll actually get sunlight that can keep them warm, rather than have this tree shade them. Shade in the summer is good, but not so much in the winter. And winter is rapidly coming. <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of moving things around in this episode. Also, not enough moving things around. I've got piles of stuff here, which I really don't like. I was hoping to get this more organized, but yeah, I'll work on it. Uh, speaking of work, this is going to need a lot more work. You know, it's by no means done, but Robo Cody is going to need to recharge after barring this around. That was a lot of work for him. Anyway, I found this piece of plastic here which is the broken piece that goes in there. Now that's good to find, because now I can weld or glue it back in. And I can have this hook up to an airline or whatever, or maybe I'll just cut this out and have it a window slash emergency exit. Haven't decided. Anyway, come around to back here. Me. Can't use the flash battery on the camera's too low. You can see the door has been cut. Got a pill-shaped man-sized door there. And this is gonna meet up with the main tunnel. Uh, I don't remember, I don't know if you guys remember, but in one of the earlier episodes I mentioned that there's gonna be a hundred foot long tunnel going along these cliffs here. Uh, I've decided to not have the tunnel underground. It'll just be a structure kind of exposed, maybe partially buried. Uh, sagebrush is going to have to move. But anyway, you'll be able to walk down this tunnel. 
turn over here. Maybe there'll be a door here. Open that up. Step in. I've got some buckets here to walk on. There's going to be a whole line of them going back. Like that. And the soil that'll be growing plants in will be just on the sides of the buckets here. So in this space. And I'll be able to grow radishes and cabbage and stuff this winter and then later on in the summer taller crops like tomatoes so yeah <laughs> it's, it's coming together slowly i'm excited to see it it's been a long time coming that's uh Head back into the camper, Ab. So, here we are inside my cozy little camper, Ab. Got a nice view of the juniper tree out the window here. I just love the berries on it. It's very pretty. So one thing I've been doing that's different than last season is I'm actually keeping this space a little bit warmer so the pipes don't freeze. I'll be a little bit more comfortable. The cat'll be more comfortable. But mainly I was doing it so that the mushroom mycelium could actually grow. Uh, if it gets too cold, it tends to go dormant. But this is the block that I had Robocody make up earlier. And you can see the mycelium has already almost completely colonized the grass. So, very nice. Uh, here's a block that was made a little bit earlier. And this one has already started to fruit. So these are blue oyster mushrooms. Very high in protein. Very tasty. Basically what's happened here is I fed the parts of the plants that I can't eat to the mushrooms and they've converted it to something I can eat, the fruiting body of the mushrooms. <laughs> Very nice. Eventually I want to have a whole section of base to, dedicated to growing mushrooms so that I can convert the inedible plant matter, the stems of the tomatoes, the rice straw, etc. into usable protein. And that'll be one of the main sources of protein here on base, along with eggs and algae. Still working on that project. But I do have some good news. These projects that I got going on will be going a little bit faster now because Google has finally paid me for the last three and a half years of YouTube earnings. <sighs> this took a lot of work, emailing them constantly, sending letters, making phone calls. I've had to get friends to help me, but we finally got through to them and they've removed the manual hold that was on my account. So, awesome. Only one problem. Uh, I'm getting three and a half years of income, which I could have been spending on business expenses over the last three and a half years, all at once towards the end of this year, which means the IRS is already salivating. Whatever I don't spend in the next two months is going to get taxed and taxed pretty heavily. Basically that means I'm going to be going on a little bit of a spending spree, buying tanks and such, maybe a newer rover, that sort of thing, for my project here and the business as a whole. But yeah, this is, this is good news because I can start going a little bit faster with things. I'm not having to be worrying so much about, uh, you know, saving up so that in case they never pay me, you know, that was always a possibility. But now, now they have, and I'm getting my earnings again. Uh, thank you to everyone that's donated to help me stay afloat over this time. And if you don't like Patreon because I'm finally getting my YouTube money, I can enable YouTube memberships. So if you want to help me out further, that'll be available now. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.